Hey guys, welcome back. Today in the Untidy Artist, we are making sugared strawberry bath bombs. These smell so amazing. I'm excited to share with you how I made these. If you are new to my channel, welcome. If you enjoy this, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. It helps me out a lot. If you're new to making bath bombs, I do have several basic bath bomb tutorials you'll find linked below. I go through this tutorial rather quickly um, and stick around to the end to see how I package my bath bombs. Let's grab some supplies and get started. So in this bowl, I have all of my dry ingredients except for my uh, citric acid. So my baking soda, my white kale and clay, my Epsom salts, and my sodium lauryl sulfur acetate. I will have a list below of frequently asked questions about these different ingredients. In this bowl, I have my citric acid. I always add it at the end. I feel it gives you a fizzier, more long lasting bath bomb. In this cup, I have my liquid ingredients, so my fragrance oil. I have 91% rubbing alcohol, some avocado oil. You could also use um, almond oil and some polysorbate 80. So this is the fragrance oil we're using. It's from Nurture Soap, and it's a fragrance I've been wanting to order for a long time, and you guys, it smells so good. I'm not a fan of super sweet scents. This really smells like fresh, juicy strawberries, and it's wonderful. This part's optional. I decided to add just a little bit of this Litzy. It's a super bright citrus, so it kind of gives us a strawberry lemonade situation, which is lovely. Then I have my polysorbate 80, probably one of the ingredients I get the most questions about. This helps the oils to disperse into the bathtub water, and if you're using mica, which we are, it helps it to not float on the top. I have my 91% rubbing alcohol. I like using 91% because more of it evaporates out of the bath bomb, giving us a more solid bath bomb. And then, like I said, avocado oil. I love how moisturizing this is for the skin. You could also use almond oil. And then our gorgeous micas. So I'm using a combination of two, Voodoo for Mad Micas and then Hot Pants. And between the two of these, you get this really shimmery, beautiful color of bright pink, um, and I will put links for these below. I'm also using some super sparkles on the top. Uh, this is gonna give us our sugared effect. We'll be applying the glitter with this uh, glitter duster, which makes me feel like I'm sprinkling fairy dust everywhere. It's probably one of my favorite tools I have in my craft room. And then I've got some 91% rubbing alcohol in a spray form and a big whisk, a small whisk, a spoon from my kitchen, and a spatula, and I just found this brand of spatulas, and they're so amazing. It's just this super sturdy silicone spatula. I have some in my craft room and in my kitchen, and I'll link them below because they're awesome. And then I have some measuring spoons for our mica, and then these are my favorite bath bomb molds. I've actually had these for years and they've held up beautifully. I got them on Amazon and I'll put a link for them or something similar below. Um, if you're not great with making bath bombs if, or if you have a hard time with the sphere shaped bath bomb, another great option is a mooncake press. And I have a full tutorial on how to use a mooncake press. I actually am planning on doing another tutorial with this coming up soon, but this is a great option if you have a hard time with that sphere. And then I measure out all of my ingredients with my handy kitchen scale. I like to weigh things with a scale because it gives you a more accurate measurement. And then I have a mesh strainer. I use this for all of my dry ingredients to make sure we get all of the clumps out so we have a nice smooth bath bomb. And let's get started. So this is all of those dry ingredients except for the citric acid. I'm going to take my big whisk and I'm going to start to mix this together. Um, it can kind of uh, get airborne. So if you're sensitive to things like that, be sure to wear a mask. And I go back and forth between my spatula and my whisk to get all of those dry ingredients combined. And once I have them combined, I'm going to grab my mica. So the recipe, which is listed below, calls for a full teaspoon of mica. I'm using half teaspoon of the hot pants and half teaspoon of the voodoo. And then I'm going to grab my whisk. And once again, we want all of that mica stirred into our dry ingredients. So I go back and forth and I really use the back of the spatula to make sure that all of that mica is distributed evenly throughout our mixture. We don't want big clumps of mica in the bath bombs. And once that's mixed together, I'm going to grab 
my liquid ingredients. I'm going to give them a stir with my little whisk and then we're going to add them to our dry ingredients. And then I start combining it gently. I use my a spatula and then my whisk and then I'm going to take my cup get some of the dry ingredients in the cup to get the rest of that fragrance oil out you'd be amazed at how much is still left in that cup then we'll be doing most of the mixing with the stand mixer I use my paddle attachment the goal with this part is to make sure all of the liquid ingredients get absorbed into the dry ingredients. So I let this stir for about three to five minutes, pausing every minute or so. I use my spatula to scrape the bottom to make sure everything's combined. And once it's thoroughly mixed, it looks like this. I'm going to uh, grab my citric acid and I'm going to slowly start pouring it in while it's mixing. Once again, pausing every so often to scrape the bottom of the bowl. And once that is thoroughly combined, this is what my mixture looks like. We want to be able to grab some of the mixture in our hand and have it form into a ball without falling apart when you drop it back in the bowl. So if you need to mo add more of the rubbing alcohol, this is when you do it. I add about six sprays of the rubbing alcohol, stir it for a while, test it again, and I keep going until it's the right consistency. Now we're gonna form our bath bombs. You can see I've got my gloves on, and if you're making these to sell, you'll wanna make sure you sanitize everything and use gloves through the whole process. Before I form each bath bomb, I take my whisk and I stir the mixture so it's light and airy and not compacted down. I'm going to grab uh, scoopfuls of that mixture and put it into the mold. And it's almost like you're forming a snow cone. I'm not pressing it down a lot. Um, I'm just gently cupping it over the top of the bath bomb. And then I put those two halves together and press until it's very firmly pressed together. And then I'm going to grab my spoon and tap around the edges to release the bath bomb from the mold. And once it's released, I make sure it's released on both sides and then I actually let my bath bombs dry in half of the metal mold. So I'm going to put it in, I actually use an apple container from Costco. I'll show it to you in a second here. And I set that aside, grab my whisk again, and I'm going to form my next bath bomb. Now, a few things to note here. Uh, the recipe I use is from Dean Wilson. He's amazing. This is my favorite recipe. It's worked for me for a very long time. Um, that will be linked below. And if you're not following Dean, you definitely should do that. Also, if you'd rather use, um, if you don't have a stand mixer and you just want to mix these by hand, one of my tutorials does go through those steps. And uh, this would be a great time to mention if you struggle with the sphere shaped bath bomb, you could also use the Mooncake Press. So all of those links will be listed below. So this is the container I let my bath bombs dry in and you can see they're all still in half of that metal mold. Um, after about four or five hours, I'm going to take uh, one of the molds and flip them over. If you need to tap around the edges to release the mold, you can. This way they're drying evenly. And so I do that every few hours. I usually let them dry overnight and once they're completely dry, I remove them from the molds. I grab my little, I like to call it my fairy duster because it makes me feel like I'm spraying fairy dust everywhere. And I am giving them a generous spray of that Sparkle Plenty glitter. And this is actually eco-friendly. All of the micas I use in this are eco-friendly. Um, and you can see I'm just spraying a lot of that beautiful sparkly glitter over the top. And this is what we've got, you guys. And I, I really wish you could smell how amazing these smell. To package my bath bombs, I like using these Darling Baking Cups. I actually buy them wholesale. Um, I'll put some links for you below, but they fit the bath bomb perfectly. And then I print my own labels. I like using the Avery website. It makes everything really easy. Um, I use the one and a half by one and a half squared labels and they fit perfectly on the front of my little baking cup. I would recommend labeling the cups before you put the bath bomb in it. It's just easier, I promise. And then I'm going to take a cellophane bag and a little metal tie twisty thing and I'm going to put my bath bomb in the bag and put the twist tie around it and then I kind of fluff up the top of the cellophane and you have this darling packaged bath bomb and that's it we're all set I'd love to know if you try these let me know in the comments below if you have any questions 
let me know. Um, and just a reminder, there are a ton of frequently asked questions below in the description of the video that hopefully might help you out. If you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. It helps me out so much. And you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for all of your kind words and all of your support. And we'll see you next time.